All right, let's go back to uh, this statement of our output goal here, an adult human being capable of functioning in the real world. We just looked uh, more closely at these two words here, what it is to be a human being. Now I want to pick on three other words and just focus on them and do the same sort of exercise to pull out some philosophical implications. We're going to pick, in this case, the last three words. We want those human beings to be able to go forth into the real world, to leave the relatively sheltered world of uh, their parents' home and, uh, and the school. All right, so what's the real world? When we say we're going to send students forth into reality, uh, what is that thing? Okay, <clears throat> lots of answers again possible here. But uh, suppose we said the following. We say, well, uh, in the real world, we know that there, is, uh, there are things like trees, and there are rivers, and uh, there are rocks, which can hurt you if you bang your toe on them. There are uh, things like the weather. Um, there is, uh, looking more broadly afield, there are various planets. And beyond that, there are galaxies. So we start from our immediate environment here and, and scale out. Uh, we might also notice that uh, in our immediate environment, there are other people right, besides ourselves that are part of the real world. Uh, they develop various kinds of uh, technologies. So there are refrigerators and automobiles. And when we go forth in the real world, we need to know about those things, um, computers. Uh, there are various kinds of institutions. School, right, being an institution. There are legal institutions, business institutions, religious institutions, sporting institutions, right, and so forth. Okay, so we might then say, as one answer to the question, when we're preparing students for the real world, we want them to be knowledgeable about all of this and be able to navigate all of this. All right, so this then is reality. Okay, and that's a lot of complicated stuff in there. Of course, when I ask, is that it? Is that the whole story, right, of reality? Is it the case that everything in here, this is uh, something we can put in a, under a broader heading, the natural world, people being a part of nature, trees and galaxies and so on being part of nature. And so what we're then doing as educators is telling a very complicated naturalistic story and preparing students for dealing with the complicated world right, of nature. But end of story right there. Of course, that uh, then immediately bumps us into a huge philosophical divide between those who say that is, in fact, the whole story. We can expand to the number of things that we include in this box here because nature is, uh, is, is uh, more expansive than this, this minimal list here. But one side of the divide is going to say just to focus on this is to miss at least half of the story and perhaps the more important part of the story because the truth of reality is that beyond nature or above nature or behind nature is a more important reality that is not anything like this nature here. That in fact there is a realm that is superior to nature. And so we will call that the supernatural realm. Right. And in that realm, instead of there being various sorts of complicated physical and material types of things, in the supernatural realm what we have are beings that are spirits, right, or a single spirit if we're monotheistic, right, or souls, right, or minds, right, right, and so forth. And that rather than operating according to various kinds of physical and mechanical laws, as this one does, this operates according to mental laws or laws of will or the laws of God or the gods, depending on the version right, that we exist. Okay, now, this is, of course, the uh, traditional question in, in philosophy of whether God really exists or the gods really exist. And depending on how you answer that question, you come down on one systematic side philosophically, a naturalistic side, or you come down on the side uh, more religiously and theologically, the supernaturalistic side. So, is it the case, really, that the important facts about reality are that there is a God, for example, that God created the natural world and governs the natural world, 
And so if we're properly going to educate students, then in addition to, or perhaps even more importantly than getting them into a right relationship with the natural world and being able to deal with it, is getting them into a right relationship with the supernatural world and putting them in a position to be able to deal with it. Now, if we answer the question that way, right, that then is going to take our educational system in one direction. By contrast, if we answer the question the other way, we say, look, there is the natural world, that's reality, but the realm of supernature doesn't exist. There are no ghosts, there are no spirits, there are no gods. All of that is uh, primitive uh, uh, belief that has been outmoded, say, in the modern world. And so we are doing our students a disservice if we teach them this stuff. We're interested in teaching reality, and so reality is the natural world. And that is what and only what our educational system should be about. Now this in philosophy is what we call an issue of metaphysics. When we were asking questions of what it is to be a human being, those were questions of human nature. This is a question of metaphysics. And this may be the first new piece of terminology that you're being introduced as you are you're listening in on this course. The term metaphysics comes from the Greek, uh, metaphusis, and the idea here is the, the phusis, what we now call physics, is to look at reality or, or the natural world and try to step back from it, that's the meta part, to try to step back from it and try to discern its general features or what underlying or fundamental truths can be said of all of reality, whatever it is that we take all of reality to be. And so the question then is, do we see reality essentially in uh, mono terms, that there's one reality, the natural world with all of its complexities, or is it the case that we should see the world metaphysically in dualistic terms, that there is a natural world, but uh, in addition to that, beyond that, and, and more importantly, there is a supernatural world and uh, we should then study both uh, of those realities. So, the educational implications of that are, of course, deep. Uh, one of the great battles in philosophical history and of certainly in educational philosophy, as long as we've been doing philosophy and educating other human beings, is this divide between those who take an essentially naturalistic approach to reality and those who take an essentially religious approach to reality. And having an informed opinion on that as a professional educator is absolutely a job requirement because that's going to have huge implications for almost everything that we do in our educational system.